Good morning. European session starts. And I would like to share an update about cable. I believe that was shared inside the weekly video, the weekly analysis. But uh, let's see what's happening. So the price started pushing up, but before that, this is what we have on the weekly chart, right? We are stuck inside the zone. And the question now is, are we going to do this bounce continuation or what was going to happen now? This part, we don't know. What we do know is that the price created here this double top with this divergence. It broke the middle point and it started pushing lower, which means we can be expecting at least double wave to the downside. And then we'll see how this thing will be developing. So, um, Regarding the double wave, depending on the way you're going to measure it from this high or that high starting from here, this kind of double move, uh, sorry, double wave, we have the 100%. Plus we have this zone here in the middle of the big range, which is super strong. And I believe this is coming from weekly, right? So the idea is to look for these pullbacks from a level I need this and I'm gonna drop it here. From a level which makes as much sense as possible. Now, the way to get the best level is, at least in my opinion, looking to multiple ways to find support resistances. And then you see where the confluence point is. And once you figure out where this point meets the price, you start looking for the given sell or buy opportunity. So if we start looking at this thing and we um, start from the bottom, because this is where the price was having trouble, like th this is the bottom part of a potential range, right? And based on the volume, that's the zone, based on the trend line, this is the zone right here. So. In summary, we can say that this big, huge zone of 200 pips or so is where we want to see the price stopping and reversing. The aggressive and the conservative protections are clear. If we have a level here, you don't want to be protecting this one because if you're attacking simple level and you're expecting this scenario to happen, you're open to exposure where you might be looking at the price doing that and then continuation low, right? So if you're going for a level, in my opinion, it's better to protect um, at least the second or the third high or low on the chart. So if this is the first one, that's the second one, that's the third one, right? Just to make sure we're all on the same page. If you're going to be trading a setup, reversal setup, and you're going to do that manually, wait for the reversal, etc then it's much easier and then you can be allowing yourself to protect here or even here. Now, if we go to the lower time frames, we can see that we're already looking at um, hidden divergence here. All right, this is the one. We don't have any divergences against before that, which is super good. And this is yet another confirmation that we want to be looking for this short to mid-term um, sell opportunities. Now, if I drop here another line for, now uh, maybe the chart becomes too cluttered, but we have this kind of consolidation, okay? That zone. And this is the breakout. So look where we stand at the moment. That was the massive drop, right? after the initial attempt, false break, and then continuation lower. So now look where we stand, boom, right there. So from that moment on, no divergence against, hidden divergence supporting, it starts to look like a decent opportunity to me. Of course, <clears throat> excuse me, we have pretty, pretty big range to deal with. So we might be looking at this kind of situation. So that turns into, First wave, pullback, second wave, okay? 
definitely a possibility. But if this is the case, we want to make sure we're attacking at the optimal level for the given zone, because this move even could be providing at least the first target. Then you get kicked out in break even, and then you attack second time. Right? This is one of the scenarios which is going and playing inside my head. Because I know that at the moment, when I go to the four hour chart, I still have just one wave. This is still one wave for me. And I know that I'm exposed to this kind of move. First of all, based on structures, right, which is the ABC. And second of all, based on levels, which is the zone that still has room to the upside. So if I go ahead and attack here, right, either I'm going to be protecting very high, which doesn't seem like a good idea because then my risk reward ratio is awful. I need that much from the price in order to get only one to one, which is below the low end, et cetera, et cetera. Not good. So what I'm left with here is going down to the lower time frames, <clears throat> excuse me, and then trying to figure out a place where I might be selling intraday with very small exposure in terms of pips in order to guarantee if this is a simple pullback that I'm going to be making one to one. All right. What do I mean? Let's say that we have the current situation as it is. First day version, second day versions, the distances are becoming smaller. This is almost now a double top here, right? The price is stalling. We're definitely reaching a resistance. Maybe we have reached it already. And the bars don't have any more power. That means I would expect for the price to start pushing lower now. If I would be trading trendline breakouts or break below the low, and I get triggered somewhere around this zone, right? the price starts pushing lower. Now, depending on your protection, let's say that for some reason you're not reaching the target one, right? You have TP1 here, and the price is currently here, and you sold here. This is the moment where you get divergence against. What do you do? Do you go ahead, do you go ahead and trail the stop loss to break even? Do you cash out partially, put some money in the pocket and then trail the stop loss to break even? Do you let it run to target or to stop loss regardless of this intraday science? That's up to you to figure out, okay? For me personally, what I would like to do is see how the price starts to move. Because for me, price action is always coming in first place. Indicators and anything else is coming in second place. So if I see the price starting and pushing down like this, aggressively, I know that I'm probably looking at continuation and I'm not going to get the second wave up. If the price starts to push down like that, slow, not really breaking new lows, uh, creating, look at the price action. The price action is telling you everything. Those spikes are actual buyers who are pushing the price up and they're being rejected, right? And eventually they did push the price up above this high. You make the difference between this one and that one, you're golden, okay? It's not always as clear. You might have something like this, which is somewhere in between, in my opinion. But I'm probably going to put it in the, um, in the trending structure, okay? I will put it in this category. So we got to look at it a bit more abstract. It's not always that easy to identify these things. But... Uh, if you have practice and if you're practicing these things day in, day out, eventually you start to recognize the patterns. And again, focus on price action. Price action is the king. It always tells you what's happening. This is raw data, right? This is what's happening currently live on the market. Indicators are lagging behind. They need... 10, 15, 14, 20, 50 candles, candles of data, right? To calculate, crunch the numbers, and then they give you an output. 
this one is happening now, right now, live, right? Everything starts with price action. So it's super important to understand a bit of structures, uh, levels, and when you combine it with divergences, convergences, and all these things, things start to be very, very easy. I mean, I'm a simple animal. I like simple things, right? I don't like to complicate my life. That's why probably I'm such a conservative trader and I'm waiting for optimal scenarios. It doesn't give me that much in terms of quantity, but the quality is very high. Right? Of course, this, this was improving during the years. And you can see uh, the statement, not the statements, the MyFX book accounts published uh, on the website that are public. My trading was not always like this right but i'm evolving every single day every single week every single month becoming better and better because i'm doing the same thing over and over again this allows me to um to see how my methods are dealing with different market situations and with different markets in terms of assets okay that's why it's really beneficial to stick to the same one, two, or three strategies, depending on how many methods and diversification you have in your portfolio, and master them, right? For some people, maybe even three is, is too much. Definitely start with one. Figure out how to do one thing as an expert, which starts to bring you money consistently. Then you can start building up. Don't jump on everything at the same time because it becomes a mess. Then you have one strategy, just, just as, exa as an example, sorry. One strategy is giving you buy, the other one is telling you don't do anything, this is a side market, and this is a trending strategy. The other one is giving you a reversal, which is probably going to give you a sell opportunity soon. What do you do? You do nothing, all right? And simply don't do that. Don't mix things. Start with one, become an expert in it, then gradually and slowly start adding new things to your portfolio if you need it, okay? But keep them separate because once you master this and that and that, then you can easily start uh, trying to put them together. Some things, things will work, some things will not work, right? It depends. It has to be tried. If it's codable, you can call it and backtest it. This is the easiest way. But what I'm doing is manual trading. I've tried many times. There are simply so many components. For me personally, it's not possible to be coded. That's why I keep doing it manually. Of course, I, I would like to be um, putting it in a robot, right? In a software, leaving it without emotions, without sleeping, without being tired. But this specific method, I prefer to do manually. Anyway. Drifted away too much with this one. Um, if anything is not clear, you know where to find me. So have a good one. Bye for now.